Empire. Three, two. This is 2OF Entertainment. Forgot. I forgot if we were going to do this live or not. So we're recording it. Maybe we should. Oh no, we have. Oh. To do it. We have. Yeah, screw it. Doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're recording. Well, um, I, I've had a bit of I've had a bit of a sort of Paul on the road to Damascus moment this week. I've been oh. incredibly, yeah, yeah, really. I've been incredibly, incredibly inspired uh, by. Uh, by a film by that I was watching with uh, with uh, President Trump um, when he was working um, at McDonald's, and uh, so I just like to uh, oh, to pay pay uh, because I, it's just inspiring. So I'll pay my little clip so uh, you'll understand what I mean. Here we go. I saw it. I... Well, I'd like to thank the uh, former uh, President uh, Trump uh, for. Showing me some really some political sense. I mean, the way that he flipped the burger uh, in McDonald's uh, was for me a real illustration of how we could possibly, um, you know, flip the American economy. And the way that he so delicately pulled out the French fries from the fryer, you know, all that hot bobbling oil. I mean, he is that is that a way of him of him showing us that he's going to, you know, save the world? I'm not sure. Oh, 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 of course, and the last thing, just the way that he so condescendingly stuck his head through a drive through window and, you know, basically started heavily flirting with some random guy and his wife about how beautiful she was and how wonderful those children were. Thank you so much. Um, it's inspired me, and um, now I'm starting up a new political movement called MABGA. MABGA, which stands for Make American Burgers Great Again. God. There you go. So uh, that's my new political party. Uh, can, you, um, can you send me that? And I'll put that just as a short, not only on our YouTube channel, but on Instagram, because I think oh, people are going to love that. Well, well, maybe they will, or maybe they won't. But uh, well, after the comments we got yesterday, so we yeah. got one of. Our well, you see, I've got a first official merch on as well, um, but because it's like making America great again, I have to order. In, I have to order it all in, in China, so the complete the complete cap thing hasn't come yet. But you, you, this is like what you have to do in America. You know, if you want to get into American politics, right? Um, so, uh, so I've got you know applied for the old green card and and uh, then I'm off to the races with uh, wow. you know make American burgers great again. I mean, why not? Like I said, what send me that? that as a send me that clip and I'm I will put it out as a short on Instagram and on our yep. uh, YouTube yep. channel. Well, and I'm sure the Make America Great Again burger will take off millions and millions of people or at least two of them will watch it but that was pretty yeah. funny very good yeah like i was I, I i was <laughs> i it just it got that, that film of him in the in, in mcdonald's just was in a loop in my head okay. so that's why, that's why i thought i had to deal with it but yeah let's get back to like let's get back now to the real world oh we have a real world nice what's that Ah, the show. Here we are. No snobs, there's knobs. That's the show, yeah. kids. Welcome to the show. And here That's we go. Extended Number show. One. An extended show this week. Is it really? Okay. Yep. This is oh. the, oh, there's 10 things and not usually there's eight. Okay, so we have strange and weird facts. The rant of the week on this day, lost word, knobby news, sex horoscope, conspiracy theories, can't wait. Could you live here? Sure, let's go with that. Birthday cake and AI slut of the week. All right, this is going to be exciting. All right. Yeah. Extended so hold, show. Hold on to your hats. Later, I'm going to touch myself and sing show tunes. Okay, what do we have here? What was Napoleon Bonaparte afraid of? Cats, buttons, or spiders? Really? What was he afraid of? I'm going to go with spiders. Spiders, okay. Well, yeah, because well, you know that song by Jim Stanford, I don't like spiders and snakes. And that ain't what it takes to love me. Anyway, yeah. there you go. 
Yeah. Can you whistle, by the way? I can't uh, even sing. So there you go. Yeah, All right. Yeah, so yeah, what was Napoleon afraid of? I say spiders. And, and, that, one's, the the and that, that one's banked up. So off we go. Okay. It's a rant of the week. I have a rant. Oh. What is Here's your rant? My rant. Well, first, I want to thank all the fans that hate us and call us Karens on our clips. I love you. Hey. love you all. Um, and you can go play my favorite game, which is go hide and go fuck yourself. Um, the other thing which I have a problem with um, my rant is, is that I, I mean, I'm getting to a point where I'm getting very annoyed when people say they want to make America great again. America is didn't still say great. Didn't say that. I no, not you. Not you. Not you. Not. Calm down. Calm down. Politicians. <laughs> Uh, the yeah. people, the red I'm hats. a politician, Stephen. I've oh, got you're something, all right. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so make Amer America is great. I don't know if they realize it, but the stock market's at an all-time high. Their make-believe currency, crypto algorithms are at all-time highs. Um, our technology in America is exploding. We have more patents, more this, more everything. So when they say make America great again, it's not making America great again. What you maybe want to say is you want to make America affordable for the average person that doesn't make a million dollars a year. Yeah. Um, that's it. No, and you know, I, I no one's addressing. Wait, wait, let me finish. No one's addressing healthcare. No one's addressing the poor. No one's addressing anything. So all these people are like, make them. No, you're not making America great. You're making America in 1939 yeah. Germany, and that's fine. But yeah. be careful for what you wish for, because when it comes. Um, you'll like it for the first year or two, like they all did, and years three through whenever, not so much. So there's my rant. Well, I mean, uh, America is great again because you know only in America would uh, former former U.S. presidents be serving, you know, uh, happy ha happy meals in a yeah. particular burger joint. So anyway, so that's uh, Stephen's rant of the week. Uh, uh, I've been deluged again, and I picked out the first one. I lean over. I lean over. What does she say? From Beaver Lick, Kentucky, rant of the week, silent letters. Um, why is there an, an a K in knife? And yeah. I can't see it because the stuff's covering it up. So you'll have to read. I can't see what she wrote because my, my screen's covered up. Oh, there we go. Why is there a K in knife? It's like a language in playing a prank on us. Just make a letter, <laughs> letter count, okay? I can't. Yeah. Right. That's cute. She's uh, huh? she's obviously having problems with uh, with the K. Apparently, and, and if there's three of them, a lot of people have problems with that. Yeah, and uh, obviously not with the F and the C, but the K is the thing that's uh, which has affected her. This yes, time. I see that. So, uh, so thank you again uh, for sending. I, I get deluged. I get at least uh, at least one a week. Oh, that's um, deluge for you, sure. For, you know, for this show, that I mean, that's that's like you know, mega audience participation. Ah. So, um, thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, all right. I'm down. Yeah. Oh, you have a studio in audience today. Yeah, that, 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 well, nice. because it's it, it's make American burgers great again. The gotcha. Whole cruise in, the whole cruise in tonight. Gosh, uh, for the American burgers, got it. Yeah, for the American burgers, and the, he's having. He, well, I don't know what he's doing. Something to do with something to do with French fries. Anyway, yeah. so um, that's that's uh, round to the week. So uh, okay, we'll move on. that was good. We'll move on on this day, day, which would be October twenty third. On this day, October twenty third. Yeah. Um, the world's longest taxi ride ended. I. On October 23rd, 2012, four friends from the United Kingdom completed the world's longest taxi ride, traveling 43,000 miles and visiting 50 countries. They spent 79,000 on the fare, making it both a bizarre and hilarious record. Not really. Imagine their faces when they finally saw the meter after such a long trip. Okay, I'm good. I got right. uh, uh, <laughs> uh, well, I think this 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 has to go into this bin now. Yeah, that's not like yeah, yeah. On this day, that was good. Yeah, yeah. I got excited when I said I when I saw the world's longest, and I read the rest yeah. of it and just yeah. deflated me. Yeah. But uh, this one, this one, because yeah. you 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 caught us all out last week by knowing what it was, but this yeah. one, lost words. All right. Coxcomb. Comb, yeah. Coxcomb, yeah. 
what do you think the meaning of coxcomb is? Yeah. Really? A coxcomb? Yeah. I have no idea. I would say like a whip, but I don't think so. I have no idea. What is a coxcomb? Uh, what's a coxcomb? Let's see what a coxcomb is. It's a vein or something man with his Conceded appearance. Man who's obsessed with his appearance. Steven. Really? It's a vein or conceited man. It's a pen. All right. Eh. What, where, like, where did this word come from? How old is this word? It, this is of, like these, these, I think, well, these are words which are still in, in various dictionaries, but they're just okay. not used. They just, yeah, like, well, no, yeah, I haven't heard of coxcomb forever. Next time we have a guest on the Lost and Found or Lost Dollar Business Club, yeah. I'm be, you're a coxcomb and see if they figure yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah. And he'll just say, I'm not, I'm a, I'm a gong farmer. And then you, yeah, you'll well, be lost. there you go. Sure. You'll be, you, you'll be lost then after that, I'm sure. Yeah. All okay, right. Okay, so let's, let, let's move on. Oh, here we oh. go. Oh, God. Bobby News of the Week, kids. Here it goes. Are you, are you ready, Stephen? I'm ready for something. Here we go. Number one. Uh, diligent burger, burglar breaks into a stranger's home a and does burger. homework for them. What the heck? A 36-year-old Damian Wilzinski, he's a Polish guy. Of course he's screwed up. Yeah. was recently yeah. sentenced to 22 months behind bars for breaking into two houses and performing various chores like hanging laundry and cleaning the floor. Really? I would hire him. Not only, yeah. um, not only did he not get as much thank you from his victims, but he must now spend almost two months in prison because of their complaints. The Polish-born man was charged with burglary after entering two houses in Newport, Wales, last summer and doing different chores, uh, like taking out the trash, hanging the laundry and the clothesline, and cleaning the floors. Yeah. So that's a crime. Well, if breaking an entry is a crime. He didn't steal anything. No, but he still broke in. He broke in. He broke in. in Somebody in somebody's washing. So Um, what about that? Well, you know, obviously, um, obviously, you're not allowed to hang up people's washing after you've still after you've broken into their house. That's crazy. Who came up with that rule? Okay, let's 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 move on now. Number two. Number two, I'm a real life vampire. Oh, I can't even imagine where this is going to go. I cast yeah. spells on enemies and eat the food that shocks the people. Helen something or other, 29 year old from Ohio. Of course. Yeah. US, USA, better known as Vampire Helly, claims to be a real vampire who puts spells on people who annoy her, eats yeah. bloody foods, wears fangs. And a cloak every single day. She feeds yeah. on people's energy and snacks on bloody sausage and has become a social media sensation for her unique way of life. Ellie says, I was interested in vampires from a very young age, but because I grew up in a religious household, I was not encouraged. Now she makes a living being a vampire on social media. Yeah. So we is, she to be a, is she going to be a guest on our show? No, oh, she could be. Could be. Yeah. It depends, it, it depends on you know how, how how enthralled you are by by the fact that I've been now introduced her to you. I mean, you know, we uh, we could reach out to her, but she may she she you know she may all, it may all be a bit too much for her. You know, who knows? Okay, what else you got? Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sorry. So far, you yeah. these two are like yeah. Yeah, I mean, the last last week a thousand so far. <laughs> yeah, last week last week was a cracker, and this one is yeah. This one's not doing as good. Let's it's, see what we have. Here we go. Number three, King Charles yeah. flew a prototype UFO over Canada in 1975. Yeah. Okay, here we go. King Charles was once behind the wheel of a UFO that zipped across the skies of a tiny community in Nova Scotia, Canada in 1975. At least he did it. What now? At least, uh, at least he did that. At least he did, if you will, take the word of the Canadian driver featured in a new documentary called I'm Full of Shit. No, exploring the British royal family ties with aliens. They all look like it. Yeah, yeah. On Castillo yeah. told the UFO director, Mark Somebody Lee, that he saw the president of Wales inside a, photo, um, a prototype craft at Sandy Point. 
At the time, yeah. Hess alleged Charles was positioned nearby at HMS, something or other serving as a helicopter pilot when he was summoned for a secret mission known as Project Sepco. Okay. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're, do we're, we're doing so well. Though. We're doing so well. I mean, it's, I'm just like, that's great. But yeah. I, nobody cares. Any. It, it would have been big news in 75. But everyone knows that UFOs and aliens are real. So like, ah, big deal. You, wrote, you drove one. Congratulations. Next. Yeah. Well, well that's <laughs> You know the the cynic, the cynic that I that I may possibly be. Yeah. Uh, that uh, this particular news story from 1975 right. has been dug out, been, been dug out by uh, by uh, Don Costello, who's trying yeah. to promote himself uh, on this new Netflix movie, our Netflix thing that's coming out. But hey, that might just you know. I don't think people do that. I think he probably, I think he probably thought it was it, that the world needed to know. That Prince Charles was one of the lizard people, and so he thought. It'd yeah, be... but it's just—I don't know. It's—I don't care. Like, show me a picture, maybe I'll look at it. But I mean, really, this is forty years ago. Who gives a crap? No. Well, like I said, now with all the with everybody with their cell phones taking pictures of UFOs and all these people, supposedly people leaking stuff, everyone's like, yeah, yeah, we know. Like, who cares? Nobody really cares anymore. Yeah. It's like oh. they could literally hover over the planet tomorrow and people would be like, yeah, yeah, great, whatever. We got things to do. You know, and I think in, I think at the RAND report from the 40s, 50s, and 60s that said back then people would freak out. It would screw up religion and blah, 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 blah. Probably very true because we were more um, stupid and we were very much do what everybody tells you. Now people argue with police officers. People don't believe in the church. People don't like the president. People, I don't think they really give a shit. I've, so if you're, you know, if you're the lizard people or you're an alien race watching, you can come anytime you want. I don't think anybody's going to give a crap. I really yeah. don't. I don't. I think we're past that. I think people are like, yeah, whatever. They're real. We know it. Whatever. The government's hiding it from us. Yeah, we're good. I you think that's how they really that, think. You you do realize, of course, that we've that we've moved on from the rant segment of the show. No, you know, I just, know. But I'm commenting because, on this fascinating article. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, last yeah. week, last week you were all you were so enthusiastic about the emu wars that you've forgotten about what's happening in the news, and and this week, of course, Nobby News is is well slowed down for want of a better yeah. word. Well, let's, the, let's emu like... wars, the emu wars did really well on shorts because everybody yeah. wanted to know about the emu wars. People yeah. love the well, emu wars. Let, well, this has just woke the trumpets have just woken up the public. So we'll move on now to okay. number four. Uh, mud, beer, and cash. Annual wife carrying championship takes Maine by storm. I thought I said wife swapping at first. I got excited. Meanwhile, yeah. its origin is not exactly politically correct. Who cares? More than 30 couples competed in the yearly North America wife carrying championship in front of a cheering crowd. I like it already. The event, yeah. a 254 meter course. For you people that don't know, that means that's about 700 feet. Um, at Sunday's River Ski Resort. Sees competitors splash through water, leap over logs, trudge through the mud, all while carrying their slug of a wife, um, like a sack of potatoes. Because that's what they're good for. Anyway, um, yeah. it's believed to be based on the 19th century um, Finnish legend involving a man known as Robber, whose gang was known to pillage village and carry away the women. Wow, rape and pillage. You know what I always say? You rape, you what you call it? You rape the cattle and stampede the people. I think yeah. that's a good well, thing. It's, 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 the Scandi, it's the Scandies doing their thing again. And they've, there uh, you know, go. So they've, they've decided, um, uh, North Americans, um, you know, particularly these, these people. Uh, yeah, is it politically correct? I don't know. I don't the, really give a rat's ass. I like this one. This one so far is the winner. Oh. I okay. like this one. I'm all for any. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm all for um, anybody. Hasn't seen the other ones. Cattle and stampede people. Yeah, he hasn't I like seen it. the other ones yet. Yeah, calm no. down. Wait, wait. Good wait. Good yeah. This was very good. I like this one. This was good. I'm okay for it. I like that it's not politically correct. Kudos to them and whoever won. If you're watching, call us at the Hero. We'd love to have you on, and you can tell us how you carried your wife. Yeah, um, there's pitch, pitches, pitches that. everywhere. This one. It don't, oh, I'm sure <laughs> there are. One of the comments was, I don't understand why this is not on national TV. Like, can I tell you? I don't know why this is not an Olympic event. Yeah. yeah. This should be an Olympic event. The Olympic Committee so, for 2028, this is what you need to put in the Olympics. Wife carrying. 
Wife. This is my new favorite sport, okay. over curling. Uh, talking of wife carrying, okay. uh, at the weekend we have uh, this sort of pseudo, uh, um, I was going to say Guinness Book of Records, but I, uh, they won't pay us, so I'm not going to say it. Okay. But they, uh, they are on this particular show, this particular brand of, of dark, dark colored beer, and um, which I don't think is anything to do with, with Guinness Book of Records, but that's by the way. And so they had a a, um, a man throwing uh, competition. How far a man could be thrown? And you had three attempts. This was live on Dutch TV. Of course it was. Yeah. On on mainstream Saturday evening, Dutch TV uh, throwing because you're not allowed to throw people who are vertically challenged anymore. Oh, um, midget throwing! That was the best. Oh, or bo or bowling or bowling. Uh, so, good too, yeah. But this particular guy was was a, was a you know not of not of great stature, and this this other gentleman was built like a fridge. We threw him three times wow. uh, onto this sort of trampoline type floor thing, which was all had all these all these marks on it. So right. yeah, there's a big petition starting up here as can this be a national sport? I like it. I'm thinking this yeah. wife carrying though Olympic sport. It should be a global sport. Wait, I could, love it. You could combine both of them, though, Stephen, couldn't you? Because we oh, could carry them this first is... to see who wins this... and then throw them away at the end. I mean, like, I like that's... this. We, we, we've yeah. got a whole show. We've got a, we've got a whole station. Ne Just next time they have this, they need to call us, and we will carry it live for them on our channel. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, what can I say? You hear it. You heard oh. it here for second, first. Yes, that's true. I like it. Very good. Well, congratulations to the winner of the Life Carrying Championship in Maine. Yeah, well, there you go. Thank you. Yes, yes. So he likes it. All right, calm down. But here we go. Uh, num number 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 five. five. That sister usually comes after four. Corpses yeah. fall out of a driving funeral car. Okay, yeah. Here we go. Oh. A funeral oh, director in southeast Poland. Why are all these things in Poland? You got the yeah. first guy breaking into a house from Poland. This is Poland. This is like every bad Polish joke when I was a kid. As apologized after a woman's body fell from a moving funeral car. The unusual incident occurred when a motorist saw a white sheet fly across her his windshield, forcing him to break. As the sheet slid down, he saw a corpse lying on the road, um, initially fearing that he had hit the woman. Local media yeah. shared a photo of the body. Of course, they did. On a zebra crossing, of course, the funeral homeowner blamed the death, or I'm sorry, the defect in the car's tailgate and apologized to the family. The company's vehicle will undergo inspection. The police are investigating potential charges of corpse, dis, uh, like whatever, disgracification. Thank you. Yeah. Um, punishable up to two years in prison. This is like every bad, Pol like I said, Polish joke when I was a child, like why is the... Um, New Polish Navy have glass bottomed vessels to look at the old Polish Navy. Do you hear about the Polish submarine has a screen door in it? You know, how many Polish people does yeah. it screw it, like it, Polish, the whole thing? Uh, it could it could have happened. It could happen. Yeah. Uh, hey, you, did you, you hear about the Polish guy in the Olympics? He won a gold medal, he had a bronze. Yeah. So it's the same yeah. thing. It's those kind of jokes. You hear about the Polish yeah. guy found the sugar in his urine, he went home and peed on his cornflakes. Yeah. Uh, well, that's I got a million of them. Anyway, those are yeah. from when I was a kid. Yeah. But this is like every bad Polish. This is a toughie between this and the wife carrying. I got to tell you, the four yeah. and five right now are my top two. Yeah, because you can imagine they interviewed this guy who was on. He was on TV, so this is like uh, my my version of of of, of what he was saying because it went it kind of went viral here because it scared the crap out of him because obviously you know he just he just saw the sheet and he couldn't see anything, so he braked. Next thing he sees is this body in front of him on a zebra crossing, like so. That's double bubble. It's not only did yeah. he knock somebody down, it was also on a zebra crossing, which he didn't see because he had a white sheet over the front. And, um, yeah, so uh, he must have uh, – I think he must have had, um, you know, serious brown-coloured brown -colored underwear. I he think had something I'm, color underwear. All right, yeah. very cool. Okay, I like this one. So, um, yeah, all right, so let's move on then to the last one for today. Chinese Aquarium sparks controversy with life-size robotic whale shark. Yeah. SeaWorld in China, 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 China has attached 
uh, a lot of criticism by replacing a real white shark with a robotic version, emulating both the look and movement of the maritime manual. Well, that should make PETA happy. The yeah. 60,000 square foot meter marine park managed to attract around 100,000 paying visitors in the first week after a five year hiatus from renovation. But the financial success was overshadowed by the controversy around the new attraction. A robotic white shark, many visitors were disappointed to see that the white shark swimming in the large aquarium was man-made, not the real deal, especially since SeaWorld made no effort to inform them before it had no real sharks. I say, I agree with the people. I think it'd be cool to see it, but it, you are SeaWorld. So if you're going to have like half real and half robot, kind of like Disney World, you kind of like, people need to know. Um, yeah. But I do well, there's, like. There's, I, do, I do. I do like this. I do like this a there's, lot. There's a backstory to this as well. Oh, I'm sure there are, is. Because it's illegal to have certain uh, um, marine marine mammals you know, under Chinese law. So and, and because they they'd had them before, then they had to be renovated. They renovated the park. Um, you know, they they just couldn't do it under law. They just couldn't do it. But they thought, well, we have to have a white shark. So right. whatever robotic one. So they have not only the robotic watch, they've got some other bits and pieces swimming around, which are also robotic, because when they when these particular marine uh animals uh, uh pass away or turn into soup, depending on how you look at it, uh they are seem to be replaced by uh, by ro robotic uh creatures. Which to to be honest, you know, to hats off to the Chinese because that's a great way forward, is it not? You know, I mean, I'd have to feed them. Well, yeah, if you kill them all, there's nothing left. Yeah. You might as well. Like I said, it's like, I, 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 it's I like dolphins, problem. you know, like male dolphins here. I mean, they get so aggressive that they, that there is somebody who is employed just to masturbate the dolphins to the male dolphins because if not, they become very aggressive. Ah, you, you, you scorn. You can find that. That's, that's a fact. I believe you. And how's your job going? Yeah, well, <laughs> once a wanker, always a wanker. But yeah. they, um, yeah. I mean, if I'm Steve World, I would say, listen, we, everything's real except the shark. And then people would be like, oh, okay. And then it's no big deal. But if you don't tell the people, I can see yeah. where the people would be. I'd be upset if I paid forty five dollars to go in and I see some robo shark. Be like, yeah. hey, friggin' deal. Like, great. Where's the real stuff? So yeah, I could. Well, okay. I see the point. I like it. However, it is a tie between number four. And number um, five, between the okay. carrying championship and the corpse falling out of the driving funeral car, there is that is my friend the the two winners for the week. The number four, and number five, they're just uh, you, we you as crazy. Have, you can't have two. You have to. You have yeah. To, well, uh, let me tell you something. When we watch your stupid football over there, and you guys, you end on zero zero. I can have two winners, okay? When you guys change that rule, we'll change our rules. So four and five okay. are the winners. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, well, that's good. So you did good, David. You got the first fifty percent sucked, and the last fifty percent did uh, you good. It's 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 a draw. It's a score draw. Well, no score draw, depending on how you look at it. So mm -hmm. um, we had the UFO from Prince Charles, the Polish people. Oh, this was great. Oh, sex yeah. horoscope. Yeah. All so right, uh, the sex, getting laid. sex horoscope is up next. All right. He's getting laid this week. Let's find out. Well, let's first, before we get, uh, we have to spin the wheel. Oh, you have too much time in your hands. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <gasps> Look at that. The Aries. 85% of yeah. getting nookie this week. Congratulations to you people. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, here we go. Of course, 86%. Woohoo. Nice. Yeah. All right. The bull is in the all, house tonight, all, people. It's all happening here. Let's see who's the next. Gemini, 96%. They're always at 96%. I think Gemini's get laid uh, more than anybody. Yeah, well, as we, as we keep saying, there's two of them, and um, yeah. you know, but they, if both of them would like to come on the show, we'd we'd love to see them. That'd be cool. Congratulations to Gemini. Who's next? Cancer, seventy nine percent. Everyone, good. Cancer is seventy nine percent. Congratulations, Cancer. Yeah. Right. Who's next? Leo. Oh, there you go. The tiger doesn't sleep tonight. Forty three percent. Sorry, Leo. Yeah. Yeah, they're um, having they're having a rough time. The Leo's having a rough. Yeah, they're having a rough, yeah, they're they're having a rough October. 
Yeah, they were they were roaring at the at the end of September. Ah, October, good, but, yeah. uh, you know, sure. Look at but, you. So not, nothing, nothing's happening since then. Here we go. Okay. Virgo, 69%. Well, I like the number, but not high enough to get laid. So, all well, right. Well, well they're, 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 all I can say is 69% they're busy doing something. They're doing, yes, that's true. Or, oh, Libra, 86%. Congratulations, Libra. Yeah. All right. Well, Libra. it's... Uh, Oh, what, what, there's, a, there's, some, there's some high numbers this week, but there's also I some dogs. That. There's some dogs in here as well. Here we go. Oh, I'm sure. Scorpio, six percent. Uh, don't even get out of bed this week. That's all I can do. Yeah, I mean, I, I looked at that twice and I thought, well, is that right? And I went back and had another look. Yeah, yeah. And so I span the wheel. Here we go. And it stays at six, still, yeah, I know, but it's, I just want to prove the point. It stayed at six percent. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Right, so let's, 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 let's well. spin it again. Let's spin again. Sagittarius, eighty percent. That's good. Okay, eighty yeah. percent for the Sagittarius. I like it. Very nice. All right, who's next? Yeah. yeah. Capricorn, ninety-two percent. Congratulations to them. Yeah, there's Very a lot cool. of horny go a lot of horny goats out there by the sound I of it. See but, that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. There we go. Congratulations to the goats. Aquarius, 33%. Oh my God. Oh my God. 33% for the Aquarius. Okay, let's see what Pisces you, is. Have you got your calculator out, Steve? Yeah, I got my calculator you, out. This is you, gonna you, terrible. you're gonna need it for this one. I'm sure I will. 52 percent so that brings you up to 86 percent which is a 43 percent chance of getting laid great all yeah. right i got something to look forward to more 43 percent chance it's gonna, be, it's gonna be a difficult week for you i'm sure yeah i see that so well thank god conspiracy okay theory. This, is this is this is a new one all right well we have to get conspiracy theory in here somewhere so uh, i'm this sure is what we got for this week Hold on, let me just make a little note that we have conspiracy theories now. Yeah. So basically what it is, is, it, okay. is we're asking we're asking everybody then, uh, do you think it's real, it's made up, or it's just an exaggerated tale? That's basically okay. what we're asking. Yeah. So the theory, that, uh, conspiracy theory of this week, the Earth is hollow and inhabited by aliens. The theory that Earth is hollow and filled with an alien civilization. Well, everyone knows that's true. So, uh, yeah, that's not, that's not a conspiracy theory. That's a fact. Okay. Well, there you uh, go. That was easy. Yeah. 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 For where we meet the lizard people and have Illuminati meetings. Come on. Everybody knows this. He's the man. He's the man. <laughs> He's the man. Okay. Right. Here we go. Off we are. Yeah. We're off again. Oh, here we go. Could you Could live, you here? live here? Could you live here? Can I tell you, before we do this, let me tell you a funny story about Could You Live Here? Um, yeah. There's a Netflix special with Colin Quinn. It's called The History of New York. And he Are said we this. Paid for this. Are we being paid for this? Yes. Netflix sent us oh. a check. And so did Colin okay. Quinn. But okay. what was funny about what he said is he said that when and I thought about it, it's true. He says, when people go on a holiday, they look around, they go, it's pretty. Oh, I could live here. Yada, yada, yada. When a New Yorker goes on a holiday, we go, we look around and we go, you know, they'd never make it in New York. It's a much different mentality. <laughs> Yeah. So I just wanted to bring that up because you said, could you live here? So let's find out. Where is this yeah, shithole we're gonna? I mean, um, this beautiful place this, you want to move to. This these these are all these are all absolutely factual places. California. Could you uh, to Z -Z 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 California? Um, it was made up named by a radio evangelist who wanted the last word in the place of names. Is that what's the population? Do we know anything about this place? No, you can Google it. You can find it. You can find it. So uh, it's actually exists. It's got so you know photographs of it. I'm so, looking at it right now. So here you go, everybody. The uh, formerly it's formerly Soda Springs. Well, this isn't any better. Um, is an unincorporated town in San Bernardino County, California, within the uh, boundaries of the Mojave National Preserve, managed by the Parks and Service. The elevation is 951 feet, and it is, that's it. That's all. It's, that's yes. Who lives there? Let's see who lives there. Um, Rob Fulton manages the center. He's apparently the only resident that lives in yeah. this place. Well, it'd be loads of space. You know, you could choose to live down the street from it. You wouldn't, you know, it 
wouldn't have any issues with him. So um, that's the thing. Would you like to live in a, you said your friends are now living in Z, Z, Y, Z, X. Yeah. The so, population uh, is one. Wow. That is one. very, I, that's kind of cool. I like that. All right. Could you yeah. live here? Well, very you know, nice. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you learn stuff on this show. Yeah, there you, go. you learn something oh, on this go. show. So the answer, this is Napoleon. What was Napoleon scared of? The choice was a cat, a button, and a spider. And I said, a spider. Answer a button. Really? He's afraid of buttons? He had so many. Yeah. Yeah. That's All why right. I was afraid of them. Well, apparently. Right. So, um, Stephen, right. this well. one's just for you. <laughs> and I was on the street for a while. So, all right. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. I I'll, get, I'll, get, I'll get you. I thought we'd get you in the end. Right. There here we go. go. It's birthday cake time. What's the birthday cake for? Yeah. Must be someone's birthday. Are we gonna have to pay for this? You know they're gonna not let you. They're, they're gonna like they're gonna block the video because of your birthday theme music. You know that, right? Uh, we'll have to change it then after that. I'll have to sing yeah. it. But uh, there, there go. we go. So it was uh, Gummo Marx, American actor, agent, and one of the Marx Brothers comedy team. I read all about Gummo. While Gummo yeah. left the group early, the Marx Brothers were a major figure in the 20th century film and vaudeville. Yep, Gummo Marx. Happy birthday, Gummo. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. Very so cool. He's, he's to the Marx yeah, Brothers. We'll have, to, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have to see what happens with the, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, with all the language and everything on this show, and that's, we won't be able to monetize it anyway. So, But um, that's, 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 that's yeah. hap happy birthday to him if he was around Gummo, or sure. if, if, if he's with us in spirit. Um we will see. Yeah. So, uh, we, oh, we're getting there. We're getting oh, there, Stephen. Last thing, the AI slut of the week. So, everybody, don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, tell your friends. And we'll be back next Wednesday with another exciting episode of No Snobs or Knobs. And we're going to end with AI Babe of the Week. Now, David, are you going to hit the button or do you want me to hit the ending button after the AI Babe of the Week? Uh, you can. Oh, I don't I'll do it. Okay, I'll do it. I'll hit right when she's done. I will end the show. All right, everybody. Okay. Thank you for watching and listening. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Um, yeah. and if you complain that we're Karens, uh, like I said in the beginning of the show, go play my favorite game. And everyone yeah. who leaves comments, we do appreciate it, even if they're rude, sarcastic, and the nice ones we really like. But yeah, so everyone's entitled to their opinion. We believe in free speech intent yeah um and if you whoever and remember the elections are only about 10 days away so you know think make best. american burgers, burgers great again oh my god <sighs>